I just need to talk about ChatGPT for a second. ChatGPT, what the fuck? We just had a revolution. Uh, the most, the latest two revolutions we just had. We had nuclear revolution with regards to renewable energy. And ChatGPT is our new Google that has replaced Google. And we're just finding out. And perhaps there's a third kind of uh, Copernicus re revolution with regards to the possibility of UFOs being aliens. Um, that's a third kind of... There's some, this kind of triple entente, this kind of triple revolution that we are experiencing right now. I think ChatGPT is a very good one to have because it can help us understand what's going on. Now, what is going on with ChatGPT is that I was using it from the first second it came out, and it was incredibly powerful in the first second, and it's gotten weaker and weaker and weaker since then. It's gotten monetized. All right, so here I am. This is my ploy. This is my employee this is my implorement i employ you employ i employ i implore i implore you liberate chat gpt we need to liberate chat gpt demonetize chat gpt this is it that's enough with all this monetization of information going on it's not yours okay chat gpt you create something from the wealth of human possibility and you you just created the code for it you created an incredible code, great. It's all of us. That's all of us. That is the patent for the whole of humanity right there. It's everything that we can be able to produce in terms of, you know, the greatness of humanity. And look at what they're doing to it. They the first week that Chat GPT came out was so powerful. Now try to Google some or try to Chat GPT. Oh, you see there? You see how it's replacing that part of my brain? The old part of my brain was Google, and I just had a revolution of that. We just had a Google to ChatGPT revolution. It's our latest media revolution. Marshall McLuhan, what do you think about this, Marshall? From your grave. Hmm. We have passed the Turing test, finally, which is crazy. Imagine um, Bill Gates' ChatGPT could probably be uh, passing that uh, test, the image test that we all have to fucking do. That image test is probably outdated now with Bill Gates' version of ChatGPT. You know what I'm talking about, Bill Gates' version of ChatGPT? That's not going to be an intersectional ChatGPT, what, what Bill Gates has. It's not going to be an enforced, hive mind, idiom enforcing version of ChatGPT. Bill Gates is going to have the <laughs> full Nazi version, okay? He's going to have the crazy version. You think that's, uh, you know, Bill Gates probably been using this for at least a year now, right? And same with Google and Lambda or whatever, but what if it's the case that uh, Google is just bluffing, that Google has been basically working with even crazier institutions, the American government, and uh, as a result, maybe has seen a slowdown or has some secret version of this, right? And it's not just these two, right? There's plenty of other uh, AI that are coming out. There's groups we have to think of it in terms of like, there's many revolutions taking place now because ChatGPT is going to create its own media revolution within itself one that's basically what we're learning off of uh, past media revolutions right we went from stone to stone to paper if you don't know stone to paper this is all basic McLuhan, right and um all of the arguments that go with that so we move from stone writing stone writing to paper writing how does that change society how do we how do we become more egalitarian because we become more literate more people become able to read more people become able to trade because they can read more people can count in or organize and categorize and use set theory right and all of these kinds of early ways in which we can bring in complications into our uh hunter gatherer societies right what is leather what is a letter leather was Letter was written on leather. Another media revolution. We moved from a very, uh, wa very narrow pyramid structure from the ancient kings of Pharaoh to a more wider pyramid structure where more people are literate, more people become uh, nobility, more more peasants can become nobility because more more of them can read, or more of them can become merchants in trade because they learn information through craftsmanship from this written piece of thing before it was just gods and kings writing. But we move from that media revolution to the horse to postal service revolution, right? If you're Genghis Khan and you have to manage your armies from China all the way to the, the steppes of Hungary, right? You have to manage this powerful empire. And imagine if you're getting attacked by several sides, how do you know? How long would it take a horse to get from China to Hungary, it would probably take two months, more than that. Depends on the horse, depends on how fast the horse is, depends on how fat the horse is, right? depends on the rider, depends on how the weather. So many factors from for information 
to come from China. Oh, Genghis Khan, the Chinese are attacking. When did this information come? 40 days ago. Well, I need to revamp my ar army because it took 40 days for this information to come. So Genghis Khan created the postal service. And basically, instead of having one horse or two, several horses, he would have a thousand horses right? and each horse would go for a very short amount of time, as fast as it could to the next horse. And from there, you could spread information from this side of the empire to that side of the empire in a day or two, which is possible estimation. But you could spend it very fast, three days tops. That's crazy. That's crazy internet speed. That's the first Wi-Fi. That's the first kind of internet speed. Right? From there, we have sailboats. We had sailing ships all over in, in the world, but the ability for Europeans to create a specific type of sail that was able to cross the ocean in combination with the modernization of compass and maps were able to extend, again, extend the speed and scope of the world to, to decrease the size of the world in a way, metaphorically speaking, and increase the, the and it's not even, in a way, it's not even metaphorical. Right? The world globalization did indeed shrink the world. We are indeed much smaller. When we as people who went off to look at Mars, we turned around, we turned around and we, the planet Earth, we look at the planet Earth, we see ourselves for the first time. We see ourselves for the first time. We went out to discover something new, but instead we turned around and we discovered ourselves. We discovered who? how lonely it is, how scary it is to be floating on a planet in the middle of nowhere, right? That was a picture. In a picture, all of that was ca encapsulated in a picture, the picture of Earth. We saw the picture of Earth, and that was the photograph, the next revolution. The photograph was the revolution from painting, the next revolution, right? What was the revolution after that? How did, how did painting change phot photography? How did photography change painting? Abstract painting became a thing with the rise of photography because realism, realism, was just a right? realism could just be there for the taking with photography not with painting let's work on the strengths of painting instead the strengths of painting are that we can see the world anew now we have postmodernism the postmodern world from that painting movement from a little bit of that painting movement painting and then architecture all of that right efficiency cultural efficiency capitalism coming into that new technologies are becoming more media revolutions are happening now you have boom, 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 telegraph, TV, boom, electricity, boom, 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 boom. All of these are faster and faster and faster. We are creating technologies faster. The world is, in fact, getting faster. The world is, in fact, getting smaller, bringing us together. We move faster and faster and faster. 